Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Thijs van Ede, and I will be uh, presenting DeepCase, Semi-Supervised Contextual Analysis of Security Events. And this is a work that I uh, performed together with all of these wonderful people uh, who are also in the room today. Um, so let's uh, first talk about uh, what we did in our paper. So the goal of DeepCase was to uh, reduce the workload of operators in a security operation center, or SOC for short. And to understand what we did, let me first give a little bit of background of how a SOC operates. So the idea of a SOC is that uh, they monitor several devices uh, for malicious, malicious uh, behavior. And uh, they do this by collecting activity from these devices, which they then run through an intrusion detection system, for example. And these uh, systems look for suspicious patterns. And once such a pattern is found, uh, they will create a security event, which is then subsequently sent to the security operation center. Now at this center, we have a security operator who initially uh, triages the security event. And this means that he or she basically decides whether this event is actually malicious or not. If it's not malicious, it gets discarded. If it is malicious, it gets escalated to uh, an expert who tries to get uh, rid of the, the, the security attack. And the idea of our work is to automate this triaging step and thereby reduce the workload of the security operator. Now the key thing to, uh, uh, behind our work is the following intuition. Suppose that we look at one of these security events. If we look at the single event, it may not tell us a whole lot about uh, what is going on. But looking at the other security events surrounding it, it might tell us a little bit more about what is going on on the system. And this helps us to um, basically automatically triage. So let me illustrate this with an example. Suppose that we have a device that is being monitored. And suppose that we find some beaconing activity on that device. Now, this can mean a couple of things. It could, for example, be a malware that tries to phone home, contact its command and control center. Or it could be a benign application that is simply checking periodically for updates. Now, by just looking at this uh, event by itself, it might be difficult to determine what is going on here. So what we do instead is look at the context around it. So suppose that we um, initially find some weird uh, network behavior, accessing, for example, a recently registered domain. And suppose that after that, we found uh, that there's some data being downloaded, which triggers an alert. And later we find a packed executable on the device, and then we find the beaconing activity. Looking at the event in this context, it becomes clear that this is more likely a malware that is trying to phone home, because we looked at the context around it. And we try to use this key insight uh, into our automated tool uh, called DeepCase. And the idea behind DeepCase is fairly straightforward. We ask a security operator to look at a couple of these security events and uh, triage them within this context, saying, can we discard this or should we escalate? And once we, trained, once we let the security operator um, look at a couple of these events, we can store them in a database and later, when we find a similar event in a similar context, we can simply copy the decision to either discard or escalate. And in case we have uh, some new event in a new context, we simply ask the operator again. Now, to uh, automate this process, we of course need to find a way to define uh, when an event is similar. So when an event and its corresponding context are similar. And we do this uh, in our interpreter. So we basically make the decision of whether something is similar or not. However, this is not very straightforward. Because if we are looking at an event in a specific context, not every contextual security event may be related. 
So there can be some irrelevant uh, events because there are other programs running on a system or because there are false positives, for example. So we need to get rid of those. And we do this in our context builder, which I will explain in more detail later on. But before we can go there, we of course need to collect all of these events from the different systems. So let me uh, go briefly into some more details about uh, our deep case approach. So initially, we uh, collect all of the security events generated on a device and we sort them by time. Next, when we want to inspect an event, we create some sort of sliding window across this stream of events where we have the event that we want to uh, inspect and the context which consists of all of the security events that happened before. And we refer to this entire thing as our event sequence. And in our uh, work, uh, we had a context of 10 sequence before our actual event uh, with a maximum uh, time of one day. And we use this context, but as you can see, some of the contextual events might be related. Some of them might be irrelevant for what we want to do. So we want to deal with these irrelevant uh, contextual events. And the way we do that is as follows. Suppose that we have some sort of algorithm that takes into, as an input the, the context, so the events that happened before, and we try to predict what will happen next. Now, remember that we already know what happened next. So what we can do is we can check, is this prediction correct? And if so, we open up our black box algorithm and we try to see what the events were that it focused on to pr produce this prediction. And these events are very likely correlated and therefore relevant uh, for the events that we are looking at. Now we did this using a, a neural network uh, and a specific architecture called an attention-based encoder-decoder model. And on a high level, this uh, architecture basically encodes the context into an internal representation. It decodes its output into a prediction of the next event. And it uses the attention to basically select which events within the context were important for the prediction. And what is important to know here is that this attention is automatically learned. So by just so showing this model a lot of examples, it automatically learns which events are important to perform the prediction, and therefore which events are actually correlated. Now, once we have uh, looked at this, um, this attention, we simply uh, aggregate all of the values that we got from this attention to create what is called an attention vector. And we use this attention vector uh, to uh, group together similar types of events that happen in a similar context. And we do this in the interpreter. The interpreter basically asks the question, when are event sequences similar? And remember, they are similar if we have an event that happens in the same context, so with similar types of events. And we can measure this using the attention vector that we obtained from the previous step. Now, to uh, see which event sequences are similar, we compute the Manhattan distance and by, between two different uh, points. And by doing this across all points, we can cluster together similar events that happened in a similar context. So in this picture, every cluster that you see represents an event that happened in a similar context. Now that we have these clusters, we can ask a security operator to uh, triage some of them. Now normally the security operator would have to triage all of these different events and their context individually. But in our approach, we simply ask the security operator to sample a few of these events in their context and perform the triage. And then decide whether we should discard or escalate the alerts. Now what we observed is that if we sample a couple of these uh, sequences from the clusters, 
that some clusters uh, do not have the same risk level according to the security operators. And this, of course, uh, is a problem if we want to make the decision to discard or escalate. So what we do is we play it safe. If we find a cluster that has at least one uh, uh, event sequence that might be uh, malicious, we automatically escalate. And we found that if we, are inspect if we sample 10 different of these sequences per cluster, that we already have an 84.5% uh, uh, confidence level of finding the correct um, value of uh, the risk level. And by sampling only 10 sequences per cluster, rather than every point in the cluster, we already reduced the workload of the security operator by 95%. Now that we uh, have asked the security operator to manually inspect some of these alerts, we can copy the decision that they made and try to perform this in a semi-automated fashion. And we recall that if we know if a, a sequence or a cluster is benign or malicious, and we find something similar, we can automatically copy that decision, so uh, escalate or discard alerts. And if we find new alerts or new uh, sequences, then we simply ask the operator again. Well, in this uh, experiment that we uh, ran on real-world data, uh, we found that 86% of the uh, sequences that we found uh, were actually already in our database. Uh, so there was no need for a manual uh, interception by a security operator. However, there were, of course, a couple of uh, new alerts or new sequences that we had to uh, uh, ask to the operator to, to triage. And combining these two approaches, we found that on this real-world data set, uh, we could reduce the workload of the security operator by over 90%. Now, of course, this sounds great, but uh, we, of course, want to make sure that we don't accidentally discard actual attacks, because if we miss something, that might be detrimental to the company, uh, for example, that uh, is under attack. And by using our approach, we found that we underestimate the risk of security uh, events in less than 0.001% uh, of the cases. So we have a very uh, low chance of actually uh, discarding something malicious. That being said, uh, just to reiterate, our work uh, looked at reducing the workload of security operators uh, by analyzing events within a specific context. And we found that we could automatically reduce the, the um, workload uh, by more than 90% and only underestimate the security risks in less than 0.001% of cases. Should you be interested in trying this out yourself, our code is openly available at GitHub at the following link, and uh, thereby I would like to end the presentation and ask for any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have questions from the audience? Yes? Very nice talk, and uh, it's very needed, in fact, uh, to reduce the load on the SOC. The question is that you do clustering, right? Yes. So which means I have to wait until I have a certain number of events, then do the decision. But what, you cannot do this on the spot, for example, new events are coming, how can I decide whether these events should be um, uh, disregarded or should be escalated? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, so indeed, uh, we have to wait for a cluster to appear to, to copy this decision. Uh, but of course, if we have a new event that uh, has a novel context, it will start to produce a, a, a single dot in our, in our clustering space, so to say. And we can then ask a security operator to already triage that specific event in that context. And then the next time we see something similar, or a couple of times that we see something similar, we see this new cluster appear. So uh, because we then have already some uh, samples that have been triaged, 
uh, this decision can simply be copied for, for later, uh, later uh, samples that we observe. Does that answer your question? So if we have new events, um, they might uh, belong to a cluster that we've already seen, in which case, great, we can copy the decision. If we have new events that will form a new cluster, we simply ask the security operator to triage the events initially, and once they have uh, seen enough events within one of these new clusters, then uh, we simply can copy the, that decision for later events that we find. Thank you. Please go ahead with the next question. <coughs> Great work. Uh, I enjoyed your talk. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. What, what is the data set that you used for uh, real evaluation? Yes, I can uh, tell you a little bit more about that. Um, we work together with uh, Lastline, which is now part of uh, VMware. Um, and we used a real world data set uh, where we monitored 20 different organizations uh, from medium to large enterprises. Uh, for a period of over six months. And within the da this data set, we had about 10 million different uh, security events um, with, uh, with which we clustered. Um, of this data set, the first month we, we took for this manual inspection period, and the remaining five months uh, we applied the automated uh, or semi-automated analysis. So those represent the numbers that we, uh, we have seen here today. We have a question from home. Well, from home, from remote, let's say. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, how do you prevent known threats from being re-triaged? Uh, yes, so the question is how do we prevent known threats from being triaged? Um, so if we have a known threat, then it will uh, likely occur in the same context and therefore end up in the same cluster. And once we have made a decision for that cluster where we say, okay, this is a known threat, so we should escalate, the next time we find a security event with that similar context, it will end up in the same cluster. We look in our database, we see, oh, this has to be escalated, so we simply uh, automatically use that decision. Thanks. I actually have one quick curiosity before we move to the next speaker. Yep. Uh, when you were talking about the manual analysis for the cluster and sampling some examples, uh, um, how can you, I mean, maybe I missed something, but how can you be sure that uh, it's not just a lucky sample that the analyst is manually picking? Uh, that's a very good uh, question. So we used a, a data set of last line that was actually uh, used uh, or actually triaged by uh, security operators. And uh, in this data set, we simply uh, simulated th this um, uh, process of manually picking random samples. And by just randomly sampling, um, we found that uh, sampling, for example, 10 uh, sequences, such as we did in our case, um, we were fairly confident in the, the specific risk level. So if you want to gain a higher confidence, you can sample more, which offers a slightly lower reduction in workload. Or if you don't need to be as confident, you can sample fewer samples. Uh, but of course, you, uh, you lose some confidence in the risk level that you assign. OK, thank you very much. Let's have another round of applause.